And one thing I do know, son, is that you're here for a reason. It's been 43 years since the Man of Steel first took flight in the big screen, but that's one dialogue that's been etched in my memory. Hi everyone, welcome to Indie Geek Society. On July 5th, 2021, Richard Donner, an amazing filmmaker behind some amazing movies, passed away. Some of his most notable works include the Lethal Weapon film series, The Goonies, but today we're going to talk about probably one of his most iconic films he has ever made, Superman. In this video, we're going to talk about what makes Superman 1978 so special, and we're also going to talk about the legacy it created for other superhero movies that followed down the line. setting up the tour. Let's wind back the clock way back to the 1970s. This was when the Adam West Batman TV show was up and running and was pretty popular even though it just lasted for three seasons. There was overall a certain level of camp associated with superheroes and live action media. And this was reflected even to the Superman film project as well. Mario Puzo, the acclaimed screenwriter behind movies like The Godfather, was brought in to do the Superman movie. And he wrote a 500 page script filled with a lot of humor but also with a lot of camp. When Richard Donner was brought in to direct the film, he saw an entire rewrite. For one, a 500 page script could not be turned into one or even two movies, which was the original plan back then for Richard Donner to do. They had a different approach to Superman than I did. Their approach was kind of a parody on a parody. Richard Donner wanted to shy away from making a campy adventure that would mostly just appeal to kids. He wanted to make a grand action blockbuster filled with a lot of heart and humor that would appeal to everyone. This approach that Donner had on adapting comic book characters had a profound effect and gave superhero movies a level of authenticity. So he brought in writer Tom Mankiewicz, who had written a lot of Hollywood projects at that point of time, to retool the project and to bring it to his level of desirability. So when Tom arrived, I was at the other end of my property in a Superman costume that the Salkinds had sent me with their script. And I just came running across the lawn. Tom thought I was nuts. I really thought I could fly. The minute I put that costume on, I knew I could fly. Making you believe a man can fly. This movie was released with the tagline, you'll believe a man can fly. But the thing is, even the filmmakers and the entire crew associated with this film were still figuring out how to actually make a man fly. Months were spent by the crew to perfect the flying scenes. A variety of techniques were used in the end to pull off the flying scenes from suspending Christopher Reeve on cables to using front projections and blue screens. It must be noted that this was all done before the age of computer graphics, making the efforts done then even more commendable. Superman as a character is a character with a lot of abilities and a lot of powers. And translating that from a comic book to a film is by no means a mean feat. Richard Donner had a vision to give a spectacle through his Superman movie. The power set of the character gave something that the audiences wouldn't find in any other blockbuster movie. There was a high level of commitment to translate all of Superman's vast powers to the big screen and to capture the spirit of the comics. This can be even seen in the structure of the film. The scene set in Krypton almost feels like a science fiction drama, with a lot of care and effort put into the look of the planet. The scene set in Smallville is in stark contrast, giving a more silent countryside vibe. Scenes set in Metropolis had a more big city feel to it, with Godona basing the city on New York. A lot of the scenes set in the Daily Planet are more fast moving and have long uncut shots to communicate the hustle associated with the newspaper office. All of these ideas of translating a comic book to a movie is absolutely the vision of Richard Donner and what he was able to bring forth to the movie. He really flew and he moved his arms in a very fluid way and he came at camera and for some reason he actually banked his body and he swung around this thing and flew past us. Camera stopped rolling, there was dead silence and then like 50 people all of a sudden started just cheer it was hard to believe. We actually did it. We actually made a man fly. Gee, thanks, mister. Oh. Bye, Frisky. Come on now. The humanity behind the super. 
Another aspect that Richard Donner really focused on, along with the writer Tom Mankiewicz, was in focusing on the humanity behind the character Superman. The alter ego of Clark Kent was given a lot of importance, a lot of emphasis, to sort of make him more relatable to the audiences. Yes, he was someone who could fly, who could leap bounds, who was faster than a speeding bullet, but at his core, he was still human. And that's one aspect that I really loved about the first Superman movie. Focusing on young Clark Kent, focusing on how he's developed as a character, focusing on how he mourns for the death of his father, Jonathan Kent, and even that realization that Clark gets that in spite of all this power, he still can't save his father from a heart attack. All of this really added to the character of Superman. The idea of adapting the human side of these superhero characters from the comics has been an inspiration for many filmmakers and producers. Christopher Nolan, while making the Batman Begins movie, sought inspiration from how Superman 1978 dived into the origin of the character and the focus it gave on the humanity of Superman. The Legacy Without a doubt, Superman 1978 left a huge mark in how superhero movies were perceived and seen. For many people, it was their first experience of Superman. Superman was a pretty popular character even before then, but it Superman the movie just took it to a whole different level, making him a completely global icon and making this simple recognizable all throughout the world. At the time, Superman was the most expensive movie ever made, budgeted at $55 million and it proved to be a worthwhile investment for the producers as it was a worldwide blockbuster bringing in $300 million and this led the way for more comic book adaptations. From the amazing score of John Williams to some amazing performances from Christopher Reeve, Margot Kidder and Gene Hackman and the rest of the cast, as well as some sensational work by Jeffrey Unsworth, the cinematographer of the film, as well as the rest of the crew, this movie truly became something really special. It was in many ways a start of an era that has inspired filmmakers. I already spoke about Christopher Nolan, but Patty Jenkins, a self-proclaimed fan of the movie, has stated the inspiration she has derived from the movie while making Wonder Woman. Kevin Feige, the man behind MCU, whose first job was actually as an associate producer under the Donner's company, has stated that he urges his team to watch the 1978 Superman movie before the start of a new MCU project. We've gotten numerous Superman movies and comic book movies after the first Superman movie and we'll continue to get them in the future, but this movie will always shine brightly, flying ahead, ushering in an era of superheroes in the cinematic landscape. And that's it for the video guys. If you do enjoy this video, be sure to hit the like button. Also let me know in the comment section what makes the 1970 Superman movie so special for you. Do consider subscribing to the channel. We have lots of content here. We do reactions to The Flash, to Superman and Lewis, to Loki, and we have tons of other videos. Be sure to check them all out. That's it for today guys. Do have a great week ahead.